Good afternoon. Welcome, Mishto Avilan. Uh, welcome to the Knowledge and Learning Commons. My name is Anna Sofia and I work for the Library and Archives at the United Nations Office at Geneva. If you're new to the Knowledge and Learning Commons, this is our space for informal learning and knowledge sharing on issues of both multilateralism and professional development. Today we are here to celebrate the World Day of Romani Language and develop a greater understanding of the language of Roma community as a way to foster linguistic diversity and inclusion of marginalized languages and cultures. Indeed, as Ms. Azoulay, Director General of UNESCO said last year, on the occasion of the World Day of Romani language, I quote, a language is an experience of the world, a symbolic universe containing knowledge, stories, cultures, identities, and ways of seeing, living, and feeling. Besides the period between 2022 and 2032 has been declared as the International Decade of Indigenous Languages by the United Nations General Assembly with the aim to draw attention to the critical status of many indigenous languages across the world and encourage action for their preservation, revitalization and promotion. Hence, the aim of this workshop is to create awareness instill pride in our languages and positively contribute to the development and promotion of multilingualism. To give an example of multilingualism at the UN Geneva in our library, we have resources in 123 languages. In light of the large um, number of language minorities around the world, the workshop will enable reflections on the importance of preserving our languages as a tool to promote equality and leaving no one behind. Now, before I introduce our speaker, a big welcome, sorry, a big welcome to uh, all of you, um, uh, to our participants online. If you have any question or issue, our team is here to assist you. So please do let us know in the chat section. So uh, let's have a look at our learning objectives for today's session. Today, our learning objectives will include exploring the interlinkages between Romani language and its history, the Romani perceptions of life through Pachiv Roma customary law, and finally, the importance of marginalized languages in today's public discourse. So let's dive into the presentation with our speaker, Jus Famosi. Jus Famosi is a Romani language consultant and has more than 30 years of history of working and supporting the Roma community, first in his native Hungary and then in Germany and throughout Eastern Europe. He has been working, studying and living in the UK permanently since 2012. Um, just if I may, I have still one little slide, sorry, just, and um, so yes, this workshop is composed of a 30 minute presentation, followed by 15 minute question and answer session. Throughout the workshop, we'll be using Mentimeter to engage with you. Hence, feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation by using Mentimeter. You can join by scanning the QR code already now uh, that you can see on your screen or by going to menti.com and typing the following code 5104-5550. Stay tuned to participate. The questions addressed to our speaker will be covered at the end uh, during the Q&A session. And now, without further ado, let me give the floor to Juice. Juice, thank you for being here with us. And uh, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, just double checking if everyone can hear me, see me, as well as my slides. Yes, all can... good. Thanks. All good. Great. So let's kick it off then. Thank you very much for the opportunity to United Nations Geneva uh, Library and Archives in Geneva and Knowledge Learning Commons. And, and, and the entire staff um, for the opportunity uh, to present um, the introductory Romani language workshop for our honorable participants today. Um, the idea of the Romani language workshop of this event that we are holding today originated on one hand uh, from UNESCO's International Decade of Indigenous Languages um, and um, um, also because of the celebration of the World Day of Romani language, which takes place every year on the 5th of November. Um, the other reason why we decided to organize a Romani language workshop was 
uh, because unfortunately Romani language is dying in, in several, in, in, in more and more communities, there are less and less Romani speakers, unfortunately. So it is very important to raise awareness about this um, and, 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 and to have more and more initiatives uh, which give opportunity for the language to rejuvenate, to, uh, re to invigorate um, um, the institutions of education globally. Um, this, is, this is a greeting from Ms. Audrey Azulai, Azuli uh, from the 5th of November 2021. Um, and, and she used a citation from Toni Morrison, language alone protects us from the scariness of things with no names. Language alone is meditation. And, and she carries on describing language as an experience of the world, a symbolic universe containing knowledge, stories, cultures, identities, and ways of seeing, living, and feeling. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do for you today as a part of this uh, language workshop. Um, now, first, let's just learn to say hello in Romani language, right? Uh, this is not an easy thing to do because there are lots of dialects out there. Um, we're going to talk about the dialects a little bit later. Um, so I tried to find a phrase that should work across most of the dialects, right? I couldn't find one which will work 100% across all of the dialects, but this should work across the major dialects that exist out there. So first of all, what is the concept behind saying hello in Romani, right? In, in, in the Romani perception of life. So luck is, is a central value, uh, uh, luck and, and blessing, kind of the same thing for us. Um, and, and, and you wish lots of luck uh, to the other person, right? Um, which, which could be translated as good luck. Uh, so that's what we say to say hello, but the actual words we use will be lots of luck. So when I learn languages, which, which, which I love doing to date, I've done it all my life. I, I love uh, visualizing things and that helps me remember. So if you recognize this is the famous German composer, classical composer, Johann Sebastian Bach, um, and his surname Bach, right, means luck, right? That's the shortest version of the word and it means luck. And we put boot on him. So boot means a lot or very in Romani language, right? So a lot or lots of. Uh, so lots of lock will be boot Bach, right? Um, if, if you guys can practice it behind your screens, that would be lovely uh, because at some point we may uh, try and ask you guys um, to, to repeat these for us. Uh, so boot Bach, right? One more time, which means lots of lock to say hello. Next thing we're gonna to learn to say is our name. So we're gonna say first, this is how it's constructed. So first you're gonna say, I am in Romani, we will learn it in a second. And then you put an article there to indicate whether, we are male, whether you are a male or a female. For a male, you will say, oh, and for a female, the article is a, right? And then you add your name, that's the last thing you do. So in my dialect, that would look like me, uh, me sim for I am, me sim. And my article would be O because I'm, I, I'm a male. And then my name, Jews, right? So th this is how it goes. Hello, I am Jews. Boot Bach, me sim O Jews, right? But we've got lots of other dialects out there. And I've got a, a couple of options here on the screen for you. Me sem, me som, me hom, me hium, me siyum, me sinyom, right? And, and then the next thing we're going to learn to say is, uh, what's up, right? Which is so keres, right? So keres, what's up? The actual meaning of that is what are you doing? But you can use it in the context of what's up. Lots of people give the question to each other, native Romani speakers. And there are dialectal variations of that, of course. So some dialects would say so kerea, so chere, so cherea. And there are other variations as well. And then uh, another question, and this is going to be the last question we'll learn on this slide. Sar san, right? Uh, so how are you? Um, that would be uh, sar san in my dialect. And in other dialects, it could be sar sal, sar skal, or sar sian. So you can pick uh, your choice uh, depending on your preference. And then one answer you can give to that um, is shukar, right? Shukar. Uh, the stress is always on the last or the last but one syllable in the word, right? So shukar, which means nice, right? So I'm doing nicely, I'm okay, it's all right. It also means all right in certain dialects, shukar, right? And when you want to say, I'm not feeling all right, it's not nice for me right now, then you will say, na shukar, right? So uh, these are the introductions there. And I'm just uh, wondering if uh, we could pick two people from the audience now, um, if, if I can get some help uh, from Anna. Um, let me just... Um, 
do we have any volunteers who would, who would want to, I will give you the slide, of course. Uh, do we have any volunteers who want to do that now? If nobody's putting the hands up, then I, I can't see anybody doing that. So let's just crack on with the presentation. Hopefully later there will be more courage. Um, participants will become more. Oh, I courageous. see one hand that. Oh, you see one hand up. Yes. Oh, amazing, amazing. So uh, if you could be so yeah. kind as to assign the rights for them. Um, hello, hi, I can try. <laughs> Brilliant. So let me give you the slide here. Um, Right, so, so we would go through uh, hello, right? So lots of luck and then introduce your name. I am the article, your name. Sokeres, well, what's up? Sarsan, how are you, right? And then I'm going okay. to answer you, right? Is that all okay. right? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll try. Name. Okay, so uh, Bach, and then uh, um, Messi Mulier, because I'm a female, and then um, Sokeres. And should I also say Sarsan? <laughs> okay. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Shukar, Shukar, Messim Shukar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Absolutely brilliant. So, so um, Julia, thank you one more time for being the courageous person in the group. Um, and we have also Valerie. Oh, we got Valerie as well. Yeah, exactly. All right, Valerie. You, the floor is yours. We just need you to uh, unmute yourself yes, and then please uh, open your mic and we'll normally you have you. the right to do it now. Yeah, with sorry. <laughs> no <laughs> worries. Bar, Mesim et Valérie, uh, uh, yeah, and one more I need an answer. <laughs> yeah, um, Sokeres, um, um, Shukar, Sar Shukar, Tu Sarsan. Uh, Shukar. Shukar -san. Shukar. Super duper brilliant, uh, Valerie. Uh, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us on that. Um, and, and, and if you guys don't mind, let's crack on with the presentation. There's much more things to, to give you over. And unfortunately, we don't have too much time. So there are many other ways to say hello across the uh, dozens of dialects we've got existing out there uh, globally, wherever Romani speakers live. Uh, and, and then expressing it through luck is the number one way in most of the dialects. So, for example, the Romani Chars in the United Kingdom, um, um, who, who don't speak the complete language anymore, um, they, they would still uh, use this, uh, the same term in English when they greet each other, be lucky, right, they would say. And, and that's, that's, how, that's what you say in every language. So in the plural, you will say, te aven vachtale, right? Te aven vachtale. For a female, you will say, te aves vachtali. And for a male, you're going to say, te aves vachtalo, right? Um, but then we have to do a little bit of culture here. You know, Romani language is a tool in itself, so we can maintain the laws of the, the Romani customary law. We're going to talk about that, right? But I have to introduce it to you now so you can understand this formula here. So when you visit someone, you need to make sure that you're not taking any negative energies with yourself and you let everybody know too. As I explained before, God is uh, very important in the Romani perception of life. So you would say, I'm finding you with God. I'm bringing only positives to you. But um, if, if you're not religious, you could also say that I'm finding you all right. I'm not bringing any problems to you. Uh, so, so the latter one would be, I'm finding you all right. I'm finding you with no problems. This is how you say, uh, say it. Mishto, mishto, araklem, araklem to men. So that, uh, that's to get, that together is mishto araklem to men, right? But then when you're being visited, you need to say that, hey, yes, you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to stay over, to have our food. Our, my home is your home. Um, in the Romani perception of life, this is what you're supposed to offer and say. And the response to that should be shukar avilan or mishto avilan. But most Romani speakers will say, because, uh, because God is, 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 has a central role um, in, in every action we take in our life, you will say, God brought you here, Odel and Astut, right? Um, certain dialects will say Shukara and the others will say Mishtavilan. Um, so please put your questions down. I'm sure you've got some questions there hanging in the air, uh, but to make sure that we can go through the presentation, uh, jot your questions down and, and put them on Mentimeter. 
Uh, don't forget to use the QR code that Anna shared uh, with us at the beginning of the presentation. And uh, let's just carry on. So Kraskasan is not just the name of our charity. Um, and, and it is not just how you can find us on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, but it is also the first question of introduction that two traditional Romani speakers would give each other the first time they meet, right? So please uh, have your guesses, put your guesses down. You can put them down in Mentimeter as well. I'm going to look at them later. Um, and, and I will just tell you now because of the lack of time, but it's an amazing guessing game. But very few people would normally think from the traditional perspective, right? So what would be the two first question when we've never met before and we co both come from a traditional Romani community? Um, it is, it is whose are you? That's what it means, you know, who's, what, what family network you come from, right? What caste, what caste you come from? And there is this question, another way to ask it is Kastar San, right? Kastar San. Kaskasan is very global. It may have variations across the dialects. It could be a Kaskirosal, uh, for example, or, or, or Koneskirosan in Poland. Um, and and, and Kaskasan is really widespread among the black speaking communities, uh, especially in North and South America as well. Uh, and in Kastarsan, you can recognize the word caste, right? So which, which caste are you from uh, is another way to ask it. The actual word for caste is still, um, it, it, it's still available. You can still find the actual word of, uh, for caste in several dialects. Interestingly, in the Creole Romani dialects, which, which, which is not the complete Romani language anymore. Uh, so in the United Kingdom, uh, you can find Chel, uh, right? Um, or Chal, or another variation is Shell, uh, which I heard from Kokobob, uh, the last uh, Romani speaker of the Welsh Kalo language that I, I know myself. Uh, there's an amazing man, highly recommended. Uh, so uh, so uh, Romani Chal, Romani Chel, uh, or Shell or Sel. In, in Norway, for example, they will say, uh, self or caste. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, Roma people or the Romani caste normally do not identify with the word Roma. If you give them that, uh, that word, um, it's, it, it's an endeavor uh, to populate a politically correct uh, term uh, to signify all the Romani speakers, right? Uh, but it has not fully penetrated, unfortunately, uh, the various Romani groups anywhere Romani speakers live in the world. Uh, so, so even though on the map you can see uh, Roma in Central and, and Eastern Europe, politically this is what people call us there. Um, uh, it, it comes from 1971, the International Roma Union in Orpington, London, decided to uh, come up with this politically correct term uh, to try and prevent um, the use of uh, the word, uh, the, the stigmatic word, uh, loaded with the prejudice, uh, prejudice connotations. Uh, but in German-speaking areas, um, Romani speakers would be called Sinti, or they call themselves Sinti. In French-speaking areas, Manush. And then we've got, uh, um, in the Iberian Peninsula, as well as in Wales and in Finland, they call themselves Kale, right? And, and, and we've talked, uh, spoke about Norway and Sweden, the Scandinavian countries who call themselves Romani Sal, the, the Roman nation, which in the United Kingdom is Romani Child. Sorry if I keep repeating things, but I want you guys to pick these up as well, these, these, these different bits of information so you can go home with that and tell other people about it. So let's look at some of these casts here. And I'm really hoping that Yoni Lang is here with us. Uh, so, so some of these casts, the Keldarash, for example, or the Harkomara is the internal word. Keldarash comes from the Romanian word Kelder, Kelder, I'm not too sure about the pronunciation, uh, which, which means cauldron in English, but so the, they are the coppersmith, the cauldron makers, right? That's, uh, that's one of the casts that I come from myself, actually. And then uh, we've got the musician cast, right? We've got different names for the musicians depending on which geographical area they originally come from. Um, so we've got, they, they call themselves Bashane in the United States, for example. But in the Balkans, the, these, these guys are highly educated musicians. They came to Europe. Um, we've got records saying that they, they were in Europe already in the fifth and sixth century playing for royals, right? And they've been passing down uh, this skill from one generation and not, uh, to another. Um, and, and we should have Janusz Lang with us uh, from Glasgow, who is running on the Glass Roma Charity and also happens to be our chair, who's been playing the violin since the age of four. And I'm just double checking with Anna whether she can see um, Yanni with us online in the audience. So, uh, so if he's with uh, his own name, I can't see him, unfortunately. I don't know if maybe he's uh, under another name. Um, here, so sure. Yanni, uh, if you're there, maybe raise your hand. Yes, that's a good um, idea to find out if he's here with us. Absolutely. Um, 
So if he's here, uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, and if he puts his hand up, let me know, and then, then we'll bring him in. So he's a representative of this cast, and, uh, and it would be lovely if he could give us a taste. And, and then we've got the Lovara, or, or, or also called the Jambash, right, in the Balkans, in Central Europe called the Lovara, the, the horse dealers, right? That's, that's the other cast that I come from myself. And then we've got the Ulsara in Romania, Mechkara in the Balkans, Ricinara is the internal name, which means the bear trainers, right? Um, a very interesting cast as well. You're very welcome to look them up. And then we've got the, the Chergara and the Romanichal. Cherga comes from the Turkish word to travel. And the Chergara are the travelers, right? As well as the Romanichals in the UK. They also, another way for them is travelers. Right? And they do all jacks of trade. So fortune tellers, blacksmith, uh, um, and, 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 and some of them also do music, entertaining, showman. So absolutely wide variety of skills there. And, and then we've got the Boyasha, or also called the Rudara in the Balkans, Boyasha more in Central uh, Europe. Um, they are the trial makers, as we can see on the photo there, uh, as well on the, in the right-hand corner of the screen. And then we've got, uh, in the German and French-speaking areas, as well as in Central and Eastern Europe, we have some. So the Sinto uh, in German-speaking areas, the Monish in French-speaking areas, and the Vend in, in, in Hungary and Slovakia as well, for example. They run circuses, cinemas, they're also musicians, they are showmen, uh, showmen. So in the UK as well, uh, you get lots of uh, showmen living here too. Um, and there's a very famous Manouche uh, musician uh, that you may have come across in the past. If there is anybody in the audience who happens to know who I could be thinking about, please uh, put your guesses on Mentimeter now. I'll give you two seconds to do that. And, um, and, and then we're gonna look at it at the end of the session. Uh, and I will tell you, so it's Django Reinhardt, right? The father of uh, jazz music. He's got a, an amazing story. He was, a, he was a young guy playing in the bars and he went home after a night, um, after, after a job and, um, and he spilled a, a candle in the caravan. Uh, so, 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 so the plastic flowers that his wife would sell in the market during the day um, caught fire and the whole caravan was under flames as, as, as well as the whole side. He managed to save everybody but he got 90% severely burned. Uh, his doctors told him that he would die, but not only did he survive, but he relearned to play the guitar and he managed to do that with two fingers. And that's how he got famous, right? And then we know the rest of the story about him. Um, so a little bit about uh, the history of Romani language here. Uh, Romani language was born in central India um, in, in, in the middle uh, Indo-Aryan um, um, development stage of the language. Um, and then it got pushed up uh, to the north. Uh, now, there were several waves of migration, uh, most records say, uh, due to the Muslim expansion from the north from presently Afghanistan. And there is a specific record uh, mentioned by Professor Masa Kurtiade, uh, may he rest in peace, recently passed away in COVID, an amazing linguist himself. Um, and, and he also visited uh, with, with some of the scholars and, and artists as well in Connaught, uh, where he found a record where in uh, 1024 uh, uh, in December, uh, I think in present day Christmas day, um, that, that was this invasion in the city of Connaught and, 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 and the people were enslaved um, and many people were killed, and, but many people managed to run away. So in, this, in the space of a couple of centuries, there were several ways of migration from different communities. If you like, uh, we could use uh, refugee as a modern day term uh, to describe their status. And they were looking for a new home, right? So these guys got together during a journey and they formed a new group during this journey, right? Uh, so they, they, they were going to Iran, right? Um, they, they couldn't find peace. They were not welcome. They were coming from a foreign place. Um, so, so they carried on after um, a while. They stayed there uh, a few centuries, one or two centuries, uh, and, and then carried on uh, to the Byzantine Empire. And as you can see on the map, uh, reached into various places. And then there's a record from 1515 from Scotland uh, where uh, a monk says that there is this guy called uh, the Duke of Little Egypt. So it's not Egypt as many people say, but Little Egypt. And if you look it up, it's um, uh, the, the southern um, point of Greece, uh, the island of Peloponnesus, um, where, where met, some scholars say that was the last spot where all the Roman speakers used to live together. Uh, right, and, and, and then carried on and split up in, in different directions. So by the 14th century, uh, we would be dispersed, 14th, 15th century, we would be dispersed throughout Europe. And um, 
And then Columbus also had gypsy slaves. I met a guy called George Caslow in New York um, who, who has evidence that he is a descendant of, of one of the Pilgrim Fathers in the United States. Um, so yeah, Romani is dispersed uh, all over the world, uh, really Romani speakers. Um, now, numbers say a lot about any language. So I thought, uh, let's look at the numbers. Th these numbers come from, um, from um, India, but we've got three numbers as well from, from, from Greek, right? So let's just say these numbers together. I'm gonna say them out loud. Yek, dui, trin, star, panj, shov, and then we jump to the Greek numbers, efta, okto, enya, and dash, dash, right? These are the numbers we've got there. Uh, very interestingly, actually, I've recently had my uh, uh, DNA test done on Ancestry, and, and it showed um, that um, we've got, I got 30% uh, Indian, 25% uh, being Northwest Indian, 5% being South, uh, South Indian, Southern Indian, and, and I've got 25% Greek, right? Some of my friends in the UK, um, um, one of the solicitors was telling me that uh, we may share the same uh, heritage because uh, he comes from Pakistan, but he is a, is a Greco Indian. And he was telling me about the Indian Greek um, empire uh, or kingdom in the Northwest of India as well, which, which, which was there for several centuries after Alexander the Great uh, withdrew himself, but the generals and the army stayed there. So, so the, the Greek heritage, um, according to him may come from there, but scholars and, and researchers say that it actually comes from um, 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 Little Egypt and Greece itself, where, where we were staying, where the Romani speakers used to stay in the past. So this is the time again to remind you to put your questions down, please, on Mentimeter, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we will try and address as many questions as possible at the end of the session. Now, loan words. Um, do you guys know what loan words are, right? Um, I am I'm also asking you guys besides that if there are any English native speakers in the room I'm going to need your help so please be ready if you're an English native speaker so loan words um, we, we adopt them from any language that we may come in contact with and, and we may either modify them or not right and then we use them as part of our language going forward right so that's what we did with Romani the base terms are Indo-Aryan as I explained before uh, so let me just give you a couple of words uh, if, if any of you speaks any of the Indo-Aryan languages, you may be able to recognize these words. So shun for listen, ja for go, right? So when I'm in town in Manchester where, I, where we live and, uh, and if I speak to Maria, my wife on the street and I tell her ja, go, uh, then, then the Indian speakers or the Gujarati or the Urdu speakers will also turn around if I'm talking to them. Um, or vaver for other, duk for pain, right? Ruk for tree. Bal for hair. It's a very classical when the Romani speakers and Urdu speakers meet, for example, in Manchester, they would give each other these words straight away because there's already a familiarity uh, since there are, there is a large diaspora from Eastern Europe living in the North of England for 20, 20 to 5, 25 years, 30 years even. Um, and some Iranian words, right? So in Iran, we picked up a bunch of Persian words as well as customs. Um, the, the customary law we have um, stems from that, uh, a, a big chunk of it. Uh, so Kangeri, for example, many Romani speakers do, cannot believe me that it's not our own word. Yes, we picked it up in Iran uh, for church, Kangeri, Trushul as well for cross, right? Or Seed for garlic, Tang for narrow, etc. And then we've got Armenian words as well. Um, so Bov for oven, Pendech for hazelnut, and, and plenty of Greek words too, from Drom, which means road, Kokalo, which means bone um, or papo for grandfather, carfin for nail, etc. Now, let's look at some of the European loan words in Romani. It's not just in Asia, but as we were migrating, we've been picking up words and we carry on doing that today, by the way, we never stop. So, Luft uh, of Deutsch, yeah, Lufto, yeah, as, as some, some of the Romani groups, for example, the Kaderash Romani in Germany have picked this up uh, uh, during their stay and residence in Germany or German speaking areas. Musai uh, from Müssen, right? Meaning must. And Zeito from Die Zeit in German uh, for time. And we got, we got some Hungarian words as well. So when I come across some Romani speakers in the United States and I hear them say Gazda, right? Uh, which, which was very odd for me. I didn't think, you know, that this would be exported uh, with our language as well into the United States, but it has been, it's there as well. 
Cerepo uh, for tile, or Gondolina for think. And, and then we've got some Romani loan words as well in European languages. Uh, so let's just look at that. English loan words. Um, so so uh, what Romani loan words do we have in the English language? Um, any examples there that you guys can think of? If you can, please put that on Mentimeter as well. Um, Pal, right? That comes from Romani. Uh, or Wonga, uh, the loan site, I think they, they closed down by now, uh, which used to be really popular in the UK. It actually means co in Romani. The original word is angar, yeah? Um, and, 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 and chav or chav, right? As, as, as an antisocial youth, which comes from the word Romani boy, which is uh, chavi. Um, or we've got Romani words in Romanian language as well. Mishto is extremely wise, but everybody knows mishto in, um, in, in Romania and use it, uh, uses it as part of, uh, uh, as a slang word, as part of Romanian language. And then in Hungary, the word vaker, which means to speak in Romani, the archaic form in the Sinto dialect is raker, rakar, uh, or, or the Romani Charles in the UK would also say rocker, uh, which, 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 which is straight Indian, uh, literally. Or hohanyo, hohanyo in Hungarian, that means a liar, right? Uh, uh, which is a Romani word again. Or manush, as, an, as another very widespread Romani loan word in Hungarian language for a human being. Uh, but then we've got, you know, these loan words make intelligibility across the different dialects challenging, right? So as a, as a Romani conference interpreter, I was having a hard time when I got started um, learning all these loan words that people bring in. But some of these as well, we're using these loan words because we see them differently in, in, in our perceptions. And that's why we don't have a concept for them. So we use a loan word to describe this outsider or the gajikado concept, right? So family, for example, in the Roman Gypsy world is, is not constituted of a mother and a father only, but uh, the siblings of the parents, their children, the grandparents, um, and everybody up to, let's say, the, the third line of cousins uh, would be included in the family, right? So we use uh, loan words for that, like familia, semia in Ukraine, for example, chalado, um, it's a Hungarian loan word, or life. <clears throat> Sorry. So life in the Romani perception is, uh, again, it, it doesn't end uh, with, with death. Duramendar, I will explain later what I mean by Duramendar. It, it, it doesn't end uh, with death. Uh, your spirit lives on. Um, so so for, for life as well, we're using loan words, right? Because we've got a different perception of life. Uh, so trio and viazza, they are, they are Romanian, jivoto, jivipa, they come from Slavic words. Or the, or the concept of hating. Right, it's only one dialect that has one word for it, um, the Carpathian Romani dialect, and, and its variations, um, Rochelle. But all the other dialects, you know, I, I've never come across it. Yeah, I've been doing this job uh, translating uh, across different Romani dialects for 33 years, and everybody else would say, I don't like you, right? Uh, that there isn't this concept. Now, dialects uh, can, can be specific to a geographical area or to a certain social group. But since uh, we've been migrating, uh, primarily because of persecution and enslavement, um, we, we, we draw to talk about sub ethnolects or clanolects in the case of Romani Gypsies. Some people try and illustrate uh, the dialects um, through a map, uh, uh, but, but, but I, I think it's, it's, it's really, really hard to do that, right? And, and, and it's, it's not very precise because um, th there's been lots of migration happening even recently over the last uh, 20 to 30 years. So it's really hard to illustrate uh, where Romani groups live um, on the map. Maybe you can show it retrospectively, but not the current uh, position. Standardization has not managed to penetrate Romani communities, even though there have been some serious efforts out there, and there, there are still uh, people uh, fighting, and we've got some amazing linguists of Romani descent as well, um, a few of them in Europe. Um, and, um, and, and there is this common Romani, so-called common Romani, standardized Romani orthography, uh, that the International Romani Union's Congress came up in 1992 or 94 in Warsaw. Um, but, but it has not really penetrated the communities. And, and why would that be? I'm asking you this question. And if we had the opportunity and the time, we would listen to your answers now. But instead, I would just tell you that there are obviously many reasons for that. Uh, probably the, the major one, there has never been a political backing uh, to achieve that. Uh, but, but the other problem is that the dialects are not being surveyed constantly. They are not being uh, researched, right? And um, um, it's, it only happens sporadically when there's a little bit of funding available, then some of our enthusiasts will go and try and do something. 
uh, but but th there isn't committed funding for that to happen as well. And, uh, and it's also a very flexible language, right? So in, in, within each family network, you know, as we come in contact with different kinds of people, that impacts our language as well. I mean, we, we may start using phrases that other clans may not necessarily use, but we've not used them before either, right? So, so these are called the familacts, right, with a, with a linguistic term. And if you think about it, Romani people never had a war, right? We never had a country, uh, we never had an army, uh, and we never went into war either. So we still, but we're still alive, right? So how is it that we're alive? Our weapon is our language, right? Which is a tool uh, to maintain and preserve the Romani customary laws, right? And, and, uh, and that's the only language we have. So this is our most efficient defense mechanism. Now, if anybody, because it is so important for our survival, if anybody violates this, you know, that becomes the news, right? Uh, that's the news for the Romani people. You know, somebody violated uh, uh, the Romani customary law, right? And, and then you, you can find lots of videos on social media, on Facebook and TikTok, if you Google, or if you search info, info. Uh, recently, one of my Romanian Roma friends told me that in Romania, they say it three times uh, because it's a big thing, you know, when people violate these laws. Now, let's look at the excellence. We looked at the endonyms, the internal terms, and, and, and the, probably the most popular one or the most widespread one is the, is the term gypsy. So what variants are there? In French, as uh, some of you may be saying right now, behind your screens, it is gitan. In East European languages, it would be cigan or different pronunciations uh, of the same word. Uh, in Finnish, uh, mustalainen. I think it means people with a mustache. I think it, this is the cutest one, the cutest acronym that we have. In Spanish, gitanos, right? Uh, in German, zigeuner. Um, right, um, so, so let's look at uh, some of the um, theories out there. Um, in terms of etymology, um, Sir Angus Fraser uh, was saying that um, it, it comes uh, from um, the word Egyptian, which used to be pronounced as Egyptian in the late 14th century. Um, and it's an adjective and a noun, meaning the language of Egypt, right? Uh, so that's one theory there. Um, now, uh, Another one is saying that well, gypsy or the East European equivalent Sigan used to mean slave, right? So the, the Sigan laws or the gypsy laws in present day Romania um, used to be the slave laws. So um, that, there used to be many slaves, but the majority of slaves were of Romani background, they were Romani speakers. Um, and another theory says that it, it, it may come from the, from the Greek word uh, gyps, I'm not too sure how to pronounce it, Let's just do it the English way, gyps, uh, which means vulture, um, right? Which, which, which is kind of uh, referring to the thievery uh, character of the bird. And, and, and then gypsy, if, if you use the etymological theory, you know, where, where you try and define the stem of the word, then it, it could be, it would be gyp, right? And this is where the English native speakers uh, will have to help me out and put down uh, certain connotations that they associate uh, to the word, uh, to the verb jip, right? Uh, I, I would love, love, love that if you could do that for me. And uh, normally when we do these uh, workshops face-to-face, -face, uh, most of the English native speakers forget to speak English uh, because that most of the times I, I've never come, come across any positive connotation in relation to this, only negative. So, uh, 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 you know, being swindled, uh, frauded, um, and um, lied to, et cetera, et cetera, cheated. Um, lots, of, lots of negative connotations that people have told us across the various workshops we've been holding so far. Um, so this is your time again to put your questions down on Mentimeter if you had some additional ones coming up in relation to what I'm saying. Uh, now, Romani culture, internally, we call it Romani Pe. This is how you pronounce it. It's the shorter version. The longer version is Romani Pen. You just add an N at the end of the word. Um, and, and Romani culture for us is very important because if you think about it, Romani people never had a physical home. They never had a physical country, right? This is, so more, this is very important for most people. Your, your attachment to your, the physical land, to the physical house, which you call home, to your bedroom, to your bed, but, but we don't have that. So, but we also want to feel home, right? So we develop the culture around feeling homely, even without physical attachments, right? Uh, so, what are these examples of feeling homely? How do we feel homely? And you can feel homely anywhere if you practice this with other Romani speakers at the same time. 
Um, so greetings, which we learned right at the beginning of the session, good Bach to say hello, right? Uh, to wish good luck for people. Um, then, uh, and, and there are lots of other greetings, obviously. I'm just giving you probably the simplest one. And, and then uh, lots of phrases we use, verbal phrases, but then songs we sing to each other, uh, which is the highest level of, uh, of um, uh, the highest level to, to express uh, your, your respect and honor towards the other people. And, and, and dancing, playing music, uh, cooking, et cetera, et cetera. So anything that follows the rules of Pachiv. Pachiv is the Romani customary law. Um, there are many communities like myself. I grew up with it uh, consciously. I was, I was raised with Pachi, but there are many other who were not consciously raised with it, only subconsciously. They lost the language, for example. They, they lost the names of the laws, uh, but they carry on practicing it because Pachi is passed on non-verbally from one generation to another. And it's thousands of rules around showing respect and honor in life. And there's a competition in life about who is the most honorable in the community. And then there will be lots of stories if you had an honorable deed or, or something uh, which, which draws shame with it, right? Then people will talk about both. And, and then, you know, this, this, this gets on your record as well in your life. So everybody will know, all the Romani speakers uh, will know about all your good and bad actions, uh, which were honorable or disrespectful. Uh, so uh, there are a bunch of laws in the area of greetings, eating, entering, leaving a space, or living in a space. Unfortunately, we can't go into the details because of the lack of time, but there are lots of amazing stories there in the various individual workshops uh, we deliver. Dressing, the way you dress, the way you stand or sit. You can't just sit and stand the way you want. Um, it's, it's pretty strict, as you can see. You can't speak uh, the way you want, right? And there are lots of rules around how, you, how you're supposed to speak or look, uh, the eye contact. Uh, you keep it various. Uh, people in, 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 in the community, depending on where they are, uh, how you behave, how you bring up children, how you cook, how you clean, how you interact with the elderly, with the other outsiders. And here, let me recommend this uh, uh, book chapter we wrote together with Mandy Pierre Lajewski, a Romani analysis of English preschool education, where this is exactly what we did with Mandy. We looked at some case studies uh, where we used Pai the Romani customary law, to assess English preschool education how much it is um, uh, corresponding to the lived experiences or not corresponding to the lived experiences of Romani children. So Romani status is very important for us. So we look at the world and we look, look at the people and then we think, we, we always think, what status is this person, right? So uh, and is, what, what is the, the relationship of this person uh, to my family network, to my clan, right? You know, um, and, and, and that's, that, that, these are the words you come up with. So, Mesim, as we learned for I am, Tucson, for you are, right? So Mesim, Rom, which means I'm an adult Roma person who follows the Romani customary law, right? And, and lives according to it every single second of his life. And that's the female version, Romni, or Romni, depending on the dialect, right? Does the same thing, right? Lives as per the Romani customary laws and follows um, all of the rules. Dad is for a dad, Dai or Dai for a mother, uh, then we've got pral for a brother, pay or pen for a sister. Then we've got manush uh, for a human being and manushni for a female human being. Chavo, shav, shavo, depending on the dialect, or chavi in a in Romani child, would be a, a Romani boy, right? A, a young Romani boy who follows the Romani customary laws. The female version of that would be che, chai, or she, depending on the dialect again. Raklo, which in Indian languages, in, in many Indian languages would be Larka, um, is, um, is, is, is a non-Romani boy, right, uh, who doesn't follow the Romani laws, right, an outside, young outsider, male, and a young outsider, female, a young person, again, would be Rakli, which is Larki in many Indian languages, um, or for a grandfather, we say Papo, Papu, or Babo, depending on the dialect, Mami, Baba for a grandmother, uh, Mursh uh, for a male, Jubilee for a female, Kako, Nano, Bachi for um, uncle, Lala, Bibi for aunt, Terno for a, a young male, a young female, Terni, and two youngsters, Dui Terna means a newly wed couple, right? Jamutro is the son in law, and Bori is the daughter in law. Gajo Gorodas is a mature male outsider who is not following the Romani laws. Gaji Goridasni is the female equivalent. Romano Gajo is a male outsider 
who married into uh, the Romani community and lives as per the Romani customary law. Romani Gaggi is the female version of that. And Amaro Gaggio is, is an outsider, a male outsider, who has dedicated all his entire life to Roma people, but he's not following the Romani laws. And Amari Gaggi is a female equivalent of that. So that's my wife and I. Uh, the word Romani is very often used and pronounced with English accent, but actually you pronounce it as Romani, as Kako Bob in Wales. He's the only person in the UK who I heard pronounce this word properly, Romani, right? Um, and it's a female adjective, right? So Romani, Romani, uh, would be a Romani woman who follows the Romani customary law and the male version of Romani or Romani would be Romano, right? Romano, which is the male adjective. Romano, Rom, a Roman person following the Romani laws. So if you can put your status down in Mentimeter now, uh, based on what I told you, uh, I, would, I would highly appreciate that. Uh, let's just click through the rest of the slides we've got uh, here left. So in Romani language, we have two groups of words. I'm simplifying uh, right away. I'm explaining this, but I'm, I want you to understand. So one group is the negative energy words and, and the other group I call the positive energy words. Another way we call it is polluted words or, or non-polluted words, right? Um, so things like that have negative connotation. We understand the power of words. You know, if you say a word, you can create energies with the word, right? So you don't just say the words, right? You use the words. Uh, to build relationships, to build, to improve your well-being and everybody else's well-being around you, right? Um, so, so you're not going to say the devil, for example, bang, or, um, or, or if my wife is, is, is pregnant, it is a good news in itself, but I cannot just say it because it has a, a negative connotation of impurity as well behind it. Uh, so I will, I will just say, um, I apologize for saying this word, and then, and then you say the word, right? And because it's obviously good news and everybody will be very happy about it. Um, or that person, right? You, you, you're not going to mention them or, or, or words that relate to death or words that um, would um, relate to the body parts, right? Um, you know, you don't just pronounce these words. You always need to apologize. You lower your voice and that's how you say it. But you try and, uh, and avoid this. So that's why we normally say, Lots of positive energy words. Um, so, so del uh, or devel, depending on the dialect, is God. So in every single sentence, almost, you can hear that may God help us, may God give this us, because we've gone through lots of persecution, lots of slavery, five centuries of slavery. We were only three hundred and fifty years ago. So no wonder Roma people always seek the assistance of, of God. Uh, we've, we've gone through lots of pain, unfortunately, in life, but we mastered a beautiful culture to make sure we can get by and we can guarantee our well-being in the midst of uh, persecutions that we are subject of, unfortunately, uh, to date um, in many countries where we live. Uh, now, I mentioned to you, uh, Pachi, the Roman customary law, which is the correspondent of the 12 table Roman laws, for example, or the English common law, um, or, or used civil as it was called in Latin in the past. Uh, but we also have Greece, which is a Greek, ancient, Greek judicial institution we have, uh, Romani Greece. It is nurtured only by a few castes, including mine. Most of the castes don't have it anymore. Um, and, and it's there to settle minor disputes within the community. For anything major, we always seek the, the mainstream uh, judiciary system. <clears throat> so a little bit about myself. I'm a Roman, Roman Egyptian interpreter since the age of 10, since 1989. I've been translating across, across dialects all over the world, and I learned most of the dialects as well. Um, my dad was the one who was giving me Pachi, the Romani customary law that you can see there. Um, and it took me to all walks of life through the Romani language. I, I translated at high level meetings. I've been translating at high level meetings for a long time and, um, and um, uh, different international organizations. Um, so as part of my journey, I'm also a Romani activist since 1996. But Romani language also got me into filmmaking. I've been making films since 1997, which ended up being a career. And, and I've been advising high level officials, politicians, for example, two past presidents of the World Bank or the vice president of the EU, Corneli Cruz in the past as well for five years. These are some of my films. The links to these films will be made available to you by the organizers. Uh, these, these are uh, the films from the UK, the BBC and Channel 4 that you can see on the screen. And The Deathless Woman, which is the first uh, Romani language Holocaust film, which I translated for Ross Mortimer, the director, you, will, you should also be able to watch it for free. Um, you, you should get a code about that as well. And then finally, uh, Cuscus or Roma Charity um, was first a social network 
And the messages we've been sending about, about, out about Romani customary law in the various Romani dialects uh, attracted all the Romani speakers from all over the world. And at its peak, at its peak, we had half a million Roma members on the online platform. It turned into a charity back in 2014. We've been operating in the north of England. And we, we try and inspire critical thinking in terms of Roma inclusion and develop ways to maximize engagement uh, because unfortunately the vast majority of Romas have, have not been engaged uh, by the Roma inclusion initiatives out there. To say goodbye, you can say the cas amen, right? We will see each other. Or you can say, I'm leaving you with God. Or, or you leave with God. You, you go and leave with God. Ja devlesa. And, and when you leave and you tell the people who stay, ash devlesa, you stay with God, right? And um, a shortest version could be ja de. Just go, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if you want more information, if you guys want to book a local Romani language workshop, um, um, you can find uh, more information online. Uh, I'll be very happy to answer any questions. Um, and I think uh, we've got some time left now uh, for the questions. I'm going to stop sharing my uh, screen. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you a lot, uh, Juice. You. So now it is time indeed for our um, Q&A session. I am sure uh, we have a lot of questions for you. So if you haven't asked a question yet, you can go on menti.com uh, and type the following code 51045550 to ask your question. Uh, so uh, let's take the, the first one. Um, Juice, so what is the linguistic root of the Romani language? It sounds a bit Greek. Yes, uh, we, we do have uh, Greek loan words, Greek, um, Greek loan words, as I explained before. However, it's an Indo-Aryan language. It was born in India, in, in central India, in the second stage of the uh, development of Indo-Aryan languages. And, um, <clears throat> and then it got pushed up to the north. Uh, but the grammar we use uh, in, in, in the complete, in the full languages, in the full language, um, uh, comes from India. So it's, I, I would say it's, it's, it's an Indian language. Uh, with, with lots of um, loan words uh, from contact languages mm -hmm. that we came across in the journey. Great, thanks a lot. Because we have also uh, like not a, a lot of time left, just so you know, you can uh, like the questions that uh, you like the most and we will take the questions with more likes. So uh, so like this, uh, we, we hear all of you in a way. So next question, do Roma people have an anthem and a globally recognized motto or a slogan? Yes, indeed, we, um, we, we have an anthem that was born in 1971, International Roman Union came up with it, and they came up with a slogan as well, which is Opre Roma. Uh, I've been challenging it uh, because it's grammatically incorrect. It's an imperative, only two was one singular male, uh, right? Whereas it should be in the plural. It should be Opre Roma Le, uh, which some of the attendees of the original Congress in 1971 acknowledged, and they, should, they also thought it should be changed, which is another reason really why uh, Romani speakers have not really been engaged by, by some of these initiatives. Amazing, thanks. Uh, so let's see um, the next question. So have Roma people ever gone into war? No, uh, Roma people have never had the idea to occupy any land. Um, we have probably been the, one of the most specifist uh, people on earth uh, that I have come across in my journey. Uh, really, we, we, we always want to get out of trouble. Um, and um, yeah, because home for us is spiritual, right? And, and we, 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 we feel homely through the culture. Now, several people argue it is because of the centuries of enslavement, oppression and persecution uh, that it has uh, been like that. Uh, but yes, that's, that's the answer to this question. Well, that's very nice to, to see home uh, in your culture. I, I like this answer. So next question, question, sorry. Where can one find a sociolinguistic history of the Romani language or general history of the people? That is an amazing question. There are some sporadic and isolated initiatives uh, by some of the scholars uh, that have been that were born over the last few decades, um, but but unfortunately, you know, I cannot uh, pinpoint you to a direction where you would find this all together. It's uh, it's quite hard, but there are some resources obviously out there. So, if uh, sociolinguistic history, I'm thinking probably Yaron Matros uh, at Manchester University. Uh, had a description, Marcel Courtiard, Professor Marcel Courtiard as well. Um, and, and then I'm not too sure about Ian Hancock. I don't think he did. Uh, but as far as I know, there are some other linguists, and I apologize 
uh, if I'm not mentioning their names. If you're interested and you get in touch with me, I'll be very happy to share some resources with you. Thanks. So I see that we have uh, a hand raised. So um, now you have the rights, Zamer Anwar. Sorry if I pronounce uh, I pronounce it properly, you can uh, take the floor and ask your question. Um, can you hear us? Normally? Yes, can... thank you yes. very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And I, I appreciate the Jews for uh, such an elaborate and comprehensive speech on uh, Romani language. And uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and now I have a question, as you mentioned about the uh, uh, Ralph Turner, uh, and he pointed out that the, uh, in, uh, this Romani language originated from the western part of India. Uh, but the new study, as you mentioned also the name Professor Marcel Kuthiare, and the, I had an opportunity to interact with him uh, in India many times. And it was my pleasure to uh, had uh, to have you know the very comprehensive and extensive conversation with him about the Romani language. So uh, he pointed out that the, this particular language, the Romani language, uh, originated from the northwestern you know part of India, northwestern part of India that includes uh, the Uttar Pradesh, the largest uh, uh, you know the state of India right now uh, at present, and the Rajasthan and the Delhi and Punjab. These are the four regions from where these uh, the Romani language uh, developed when they uh, went out of India. Because the the language of Roma, uh, Romani language or Romanus uh, developed outside India, and so even a Turner agreed uh, that uh, the uh, the Romani language is a quite analogous to uh, to uh, Avdhi language and Bridge Bhasha. That is a, one of the Hindi uh, new languages of uh, uh, India that in uh, that uh, you know the that developed in the medieval time, like maybe the eighth century and the ninth century. So uh, that. So I want to know that, uh, do you know that the Marcel has uh, strongly uh, asserted that the Roma originated from the northern part, as you also mentioned in your speech about the Gajani invasion uh, in the 1018, when the Gajani invaded India and to uh, cut it off the 50 and 55,000 Roma people from uh, India to Gajani, and then after the Persia and Baghdad, and then Anatolia, and then Balkan, and then, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, the, uh, in 15th century Europe. So that uh, that languages and still the in uh, the romani language has 900 sanskrit indian language root words 200 obviously the 200 words in the greece uh, uh, greece origin of a greece origin so um, uh, that is now the research study is going towards the specific geographical area of india rather than uh, earlier we used to say that like uh, Turner or you know uh, like uh, Miklosich and other uh, 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 Samson, uh, John Samson and other even you also mentioned the new researcher like uh, Angus Fraser. So now the research is going to the specific geographical area rather than scattered. Earlier we used to say that the from northwestern part or central part of India. So now we can specifically point out that the Romani language originated from the northwestern part of India, including Uttar Pradesh, and from the, in that places, in, in those places, the Avdhi and the Magdhi and Brajbhasha, Rajasthani, uh, these are the languages which paved the way for the development of the Romani language, and that I want to know. So what your stand, uh, Juicy? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Samir. I'll, I'll, I'll try and give a very brief answer and uh, we can continue the conversation, of course, outside um, uh, uh, this session. Um, but my brief answer would be um, that, yes, uh, there's a very strong Northwestern connection, as my, the genealogy also shows for, for me, 25% of myself comes from Northwest of India. Um, and, and, and I agree as well that um, I, I think Romani language and Romani culture was born during the journey. Right, not in one single place, you know. So, so I think that's why it's a very unique culture. You know, if you travel, uh, you keep traveling all the time. You know, you, you will be different to other people who are settled. Next question, please. I mean, let's can continue this conversation. I was loving your in, uh, intervention. Thank you. Thanks Thank you very lot. much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. And now we have another um, hand here. So Scott Lewin, 
let me give you the floor. Okay, now uh, you should uh, be able to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, Kusti Divas, Lajko Divas, Messi Scott. Um, I have a question specifically relating to gammy or bad energy words and specifically to do with the industry that I work in. So I think I was speaking to somebody on Kaskasan's Facebook site yesterday, uh, not yesterday, sorry, Friday. Um, so I work in the funeral industry. And in our, in our area, we have uh, quite a big East European Roma and Romani population. At the moment, we have a very good relationship with these families. I was just wondering, is there anything that we can be doing to try and negate some of the negative energy words that are without question going to have to come up during such um, such discussions and interactions? Uh, if it's not appropriate to answer it here, not a problem. I'll find a, another way to, to ask you at uh, a later date. Uh, Scott, uh, thank you very much for coming today and for signing up for the session as well as for the question. Um, I would say, yes, there is. Uh, the specific answers will require more time so I can better elaborate. If you look for me individually, uh, yeah. I would be very happy to help you with that. Uh, right? That's you. all I can uh, tell you now. No, uh, that's wonderful. Thank answer. you very much. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. So, uh, Zamir, uh, okay, no, I think it's okay. You don't have any questions. So let's uh, head to, to Menti uh, again. So the next question that we have here is, do different Roma branches understand each other? Yeah, it depends on how close the two dialects are to each other and what group of dialects they come from. Uh, but if they are very distant, then uh, they will have lots of challenges uh, comprehending each other if they are exposed to one another the first time. But after a couple of conversations or, or after a few hours of a chat, uh, you should be able to figure out, you know, the differences and, and then you will know. So, so the more you practice, uh, the more you will realize that actually there is a very rich common Romani um, across the dialect. So, so it, it depends also which dialect you will learn, right? So, if, for example, if you learn my dialect, you know, you should be able to understand most of the other Romani speakers from various clans. Okay, thanks. So let's uh, have a look to uh, our last two questions. Did you know Basht also means luck in Egyptian Arabic? Um, I didn't know that. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Um, as far as I know, we got this from Persia, uh, right? Uh, so in, in present day Iran, uh, they also use the same word uh, for mm -hmm. Basht. And on that note, I am Mexican and I discovered it is on the resource guide that we prepared for you. But there are apparently in Mexican slang, a lot of words from Romani language. So for example, chavo in Mexican slang, slang it also means, uh, uh, you know, young boy. So oh, that was beautiful. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last question. Can you please say again, what is thank you in Romani language? Yes, uh, so uh, th there are two ways we, we say thank you, but um, they are not the Romani way. In, 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 Ro in, in Romani way of thinking, thank you doesn't really mean anything. Uh, so instead you bless the person that you speak to, right? When you want to thank someone. So, so you could use uh, the formula, which we learned at the beginning, Bach, right? You could, you could very easily say that. We've got two words, so let me say them as well. Nais, or Nais took the longer version. Uh, which is very similar to nice, and it's easy to remember it that way. You just say it as a long nice, nice, right? Uh, and the other one is parikerav, parikerav. Uh, these are the two words, but again, budbach is, uh, would work better. Great, thanks a lot. So on that note, uh, budbach, uh, juice, uh, thank you a lot for um, this presentation, very insightful uh, presentation. And uh, before we conclude this session, so we prepared a resource guide where you'll be able to find the four points of today's session and further information and resources on Romani language. Also, um, thanks to Juice, you'll find the links uh, to watch several movies that uh, he produced. And uh, finally, we recommend subscribing to our newsletter to not miss updates on our next event. Speaking of which, save the date to our next event about the future of digital diplomacy that will be held 
on Thursday, November 24, and uh, will be online. Don't hesitate to give us your feedback by email at comments at un.org or through us, our survey that you can find in our website. And so, again, many thanks. Goodbye to our fantastic uh, speaker, Jus Vamosi, for today's insightful session on Romani language. And thanks to all of you who took the time to participate. This event would not have been possible without our wonderful team. Thanks a lot to all, uh, all the colleagues from DCM, Roberta, Nivert, Amber, and Ying for all the backstage work. I wish you all a nice week and à bientôt. So thank you, Just We finished this with uh, some music. <laughs> Do you yeah. have a great? Yeah, um, so. Thank you very much to everyone. Good bach, good bach, the casamen. Thank you so much. Thanks a Thank lot. You. See you. you soon. Bye, everyone. Ciao, Devlesa. Thank you.